Hello, my name is Haley Manwaring, and I'm here for my video to talk about the explore portion of the lesson plan. I am going to have my lesson plan in front of you just to kind of walk through and show you exactly what my plan is or what I'm thinking. So for the explore portion, we would kick it off with immediately starting with something to like pull them in. And so my idea was making the weather cloud to show them exactly like water falling from the cloud. And this is something that we would do as a class. It would start off with obviously like filling mason jars with water and the whipped cream on the top. And then each kid would have a turn to come and put one drop of food coloring into the jar to see what happens to kind of represent rain. And I'd have multiple mason jars with this ready to go. So each kid would have the opportunity to drop dye into the mason jar. And I would ask students, you know, why is it that the rain went through the clouds? And why did it go all the way to the bottom of the jar? And then we talk about the importance of rain for especially a state like Kansas. Why is rain important and why do we need the rain in order to survive? And then of course we'd start talking about lots of different types of weather and the different types of weather they may see here in Kansas. So we would talk about some of the definitions and you know talking about thunderstorms, tornadoes, um, the different seasons, I'd really want to hit on different things like snow and maybe hail. And those are all possibility of what they could see in the early spring, which is kind of where I'm basing this off. I'd want to do this during the like late, late winter to early spring, that transition, because there's so many different types of weather that you can see with the temperatures changing so much from like cold days to like really hot days. And I, you know, never know what the kids may see. So and the point of this lesson is to really get kids to be thinking about weather and being able to chart what they see. So this is going to be like a 14 day process. And every single day, the kids are going to go outside for a little bit of time and they are going to observe the weather and what is happening around them outside. I'm really hoping that during this lesson, they would at least be able to see rain, wind and possibly snow but those are the common um, types of weather I think that they would see during this time. Um, for those ones that they don't see, I would show videos to kind of give them an idea of what that's like, especially tornado. I would hope we don't see a tornado, but it's something that kids also need to be aware of. When we do this, then I would have the kids chart exactly what they saw, what it felt like outside. And then we would also write down as a class what the temperature is outside. So they're going to do that for 14 days and they're going to document everything that they see. And then with that, they are going to um, start thinking about what they can do to create their own weather type at home. So they're going to make like a replica or a project. And this model is going to be a way for them to understand how this type of weather works. My hope is that through all you know videos we show in class and the research they do at home that they're going to work together with their parents to make this project. And I'm really hoping that the model that they choose is something that they are interested in or that they think is going to be um, something that we would definitely see in Kansas. So of course I'm going to encourage kids to like stay away from like hurricanes and weather like that or tsunamis now we'll talk about them and we'll probably talk about why you may you know that you're not going to see this in kansas but my goal is to keep it pretty simple especially since this is more geared towards kindergarten and already talking about like tornado and snow and why that doesn't happen every day is already a tough concept for kindergartners to understand with that model, I'm hoping that they'll come back and I'm also going to show them and send home different ideas of models that they can use. So like making snow or um, being able to make like a tornado in a jar. And then, of course, this right here, um, they can use it or they can come up with their own model of whatever they'd like to use from home. So things that I want them to keep in mind. Um, like I said, those um, exploring questions of like, why does Kansas need rain? Why do tornadoes form? Um, once again, why, do, why does Kansas not have hurricanes or tsunamis? Um, where does hail come from? 
And with this, I would really like to be able to explore more with my kindergartners and get them out of the classroom. I feel like the more hands-on that they can be, the better this whole experience would be. The Exploration Center in, can or in Wichita is absolutely amazing. I love going with my own children. And every year they do a t um, like an exploration event where you can go and the whole area is about weather. They have a little weather portion that's year all around, but then they bring in a bigger one during the springtime. And it really allows for kids to explore and understand why the different types of weather happens and what it feels like to be in that type of weather. So especially the tornado simulator is always there, but I just think that'd be a great experience for kids to understand truly like how windy it could get during that experience. And, you know, like I said, the more hands-on they can be, the more they're gonna truly understand why different types and forms of weather happen. So when students come back, that's when I would officially send home all that paperwork for students to take home or ideas. And I would send like notes home to families, emails, balloons, notifications, anything to make sure that parents got the uh, memo for how and what can be used to form the weather model with their student. Then the last part is students are going to bring those models back to school. And, you know, of course, they're kindergartners. So my hope through all this is that they're just able to explain what type of weather they chose, why they chose it, and maybe even how um, important it is that we have that type of weather here in Kansas. So one of the big things I hope kids take away from this is the understanding of, you know, whenever you may hear parents or people talk about how we haven't had rain for days, rain is extremely important, especially here in Kansas, because farmers need it in order to grow their crops. And, you know, obviously we need water in order to stay alive as humans. So I'm just hoping they take away the importance of the different types of weather and why it's needed. I'm also going to hit on my focus students. I really planned this based on my class and one of my students I know that has like extreme ADHD, he even has it written down that he needs a scribe. And so more than likely, like if we were go to go out and chart all these different types of weather they see outside, it's going to be like hand over hand or either this child is going to explain what they're seeing and the pair is going to write it down. Um, I would obviously give this child the opportunity to write or draw what they see, but I feel like it's going to be more than likely the pair are doing most of it and the child just speaking what they see. Um, same thing goes for the model. To be honest, there's also going to be students that you know you're just going to see in school that maybe their parents are not as involved and this model is not going to happen. So of course I'm going to give the students time during the day to work on these models and I'm more than happy to help them and supply that in my classroom. And if I see that does become an issue, then that child will just do the model with me or the pairs I have to support my classroom. And of course, parents are more than welcome to reach out to me if any, you know, materials are an issue or such things like that. So overall, this um, lesson, I really love the idea of doing a weather unit. I think back to our reading module that we just got this new reading unit, and I don't know if weather has really hit much on it. And of course, when we do talk about weather or things like that in reading, it's just used for more underlying like standards. So the focus is really not on the weather. The focus is on can they answer and ask questions? Can they understand a nonfiction text? You know, and I was really thinking about this lesson and it's so hard to fit in anything that is not scheduled into your day already from the state and standards or whatever your district has passed. I mean, just to give an idea with like our math and reading units that we have in our school, I mean, those units are so long that I maybe have five days of wiggle room in the entire year that don't get, that are not taken up by the reading curriculum or taken up by the math curriculum. So just thinking about something like this is really difficult to think about how I could fit it honestly into my day. And so um, part of that honestly kind of makes me sad to think about how fun activities or fun projects and units like this are so hard to do in a regular classroom. Um, so if you have any tips and tricks or things that you know or have seen other teachers do to incorporate things into their classroom like this for a long period of time, um, let me know. I honestly love this idea. 
And sometimes a teacher, I think that's honestly why we see burnout is because we don't get the excitement to be able to do these types of things on our own. And we don't get the experience of being able to choose what we want to do because we are being asked to do so much. So overall, I really did enjoy this project and it was fun to be able to explore something and create something on my own that wasn't um, like I wasn't given a standard and told I had to use that standard or I didn't have a focus and I had to use that focus. So thank you.